Name Frederick Douglass Haynes III. And how long have you been pastor of the church? 35 years. Really? So uh, tell me about where you're from. How did you get to pastor this church? I remember you said a tidbit on Sunday right. about they tried to lock you out the doors of the church and they didn't want to let you pastor. And there's okay. very few people around here that know what you were talking about during that time. I'm sure okay. they're here, but I was okay. like, what? No, that's real. Okay. Yeah, well, I've been here 35 years and... I was a student at Bishop College when the church uh, first, through the pastor who organized the church, invited me to come and preach. He had heard about me and because uh, I had preached for a friend of his down in, what, Orange, Texas. And so his friend called him and said, hey, you got to have this young cat. And so I went and preached at the church. And, you know, I mean, they, they seemed to like me, according to him. Now, I didn't feel the love in terms of the amens because it wasn't that kind of, I guess, you know, church. Okay. But I'm like, I can't tell. Mm -hmm. So next thing I know, he said, you got to come back. And so because, and this is a little snobby of me, I grew up in a big church in San Francisco. My dad pastor, my granddad pastor. So Friendship West was a little small and all that. And so it wasn't the smallness that messed with me. It was, okay, you small, but you ain't even saying amen while I'm preaching. And I'm a young preacher, so I'm kind of basing, you know, how I'm doing by, you know, your response or lack thereof. <laughs> okay. So uh, when he kept inviting me, I said, no, I'm busy. And busy? What you doing being busy? I'm a college student. You know, I wasn't busy. I was lying. So he said, uh, okay, and this is in July of eighty. One, he says, okay, first Sunday, February 83. I know you're not that booked. So I said, okay, you got me. So <laughs> I came back. Well, that Sunday, you know, unbeknownst to us, he had walking pneumonia, and he passed away that week. So I'm the last preacher they've heard. I'm a senior at Bishop College, and, you know, they asked me, okay, will you serve as, you know, interim pastor until we get someone? And so I said, no, 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 because I didn't want to, you know, I mean, it was my senior year mm -hmm. in college. Mm -hmm. I don't need, you know, any extra responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And so they called Dr. C.W. Clark of Good Street. He said, man, this is a good experience for you. Put it on your resume. I said, okay, doc. So I said, okay. So I came and served as interim pastor until I graduated. And then I got ready to go to graduate school, but I went home to see, check on my mom's. She had been through a divorce, uh, had a rough time, and so... You know, I ended up staying, you know, the idea was to stay for a semester and then go back, go to grad school after that. Well, okay. while I'm making up my mind about grad school, unbeknownst to me, Friendship West decides we want to make him our pastor. Got it. And so they voted for me to come and serve as pastor. I said, nope, can't do it. <laughs> and so they said, well, you're going to pray about it? Nope. nope. I'm on my way to grad school. It wasn't my, my, my plan, you know. Yeah. And so... Um, they called Dr. Clark again, but they also called Dr. Manuel Scott, who was at St. John, both mentors. And so they said, man, you, you got to pray about it. I mean, this is preaching. It's the Lord's work. At least consult with the Lord before you make a decision. Makes sense. So I prayed, and I felt like, okay, well, maybe this is it, you know. And so uh, that's how I got here. And then what you're referencing, like five years into being here, uh, you know, I got married because I was single when I first got here. Okay. So I get married, and that didn't set well with some people. And so, I mean, yeah, we had like an exodus of, you know, people, I guess, who had hopes. And I wasn't really down with that. And right. then the former pastor's wife, you know, she had her own agenda. Yeah. Uh, both you know, personal and in terms of the church. And so she came for me, organized a group, and that group basically uh, was able to get a judge to think that I was doing some stuff that I wasn't doing. And the judge then what? Yeah, issued a restraining order on me. So I was out of the church for a month, and then we had to go to court. And when we went to court, that's when the judge rendered his verdict in our favor. Because, again, it was, it was frivolous, yeah. and it was just a lot of lying. Wow. Yeah. This is Friendship West. Friendship West. West. Okay, good stuff. So tell me about uh, how did what, your teachings, like everybody thinks you're the black church. <laughs> is that intentional that you're the black church? I know we've had Pastor um, Dr. Jeremiah Wright come. Right. We've had 
Actually, most of the the saint, I, the only time I've ever seen Reverend Jesse Jackson, the legend that he is, is at your church. Right. Uh, is that intentional? That you have? Is there some upbringing that, that kind of led you to? We got to weave in our black leadership, civic leaders, into yeah. the church. Oh, no doubt about it.